Assalamu alaikum. Today we will be talking about the setting of teeth, upper and lower teeth, using acrylic teeth for our case. So you have finished the step where you have mounted the upper and lower casts. While mounting, we made sure that the midlines uh, all are in line. We check that by looking at the articulator with the pen. We compare the midlines with the pen so we can find that they are aligned. And once these midlines are aligned, and as you see here, if we remove the pen, inside the pen you can see that the midlines are aligned together. We make sure that these lines are, cur are uh, uh, all aligned together. The casts are aligned in the mounting, and this is when we are ready to do the setting. We make sure before doing the setting that the pen is touching the table the screw is secured, and we will present you with the teeth. The teeth are an acrylic mold of teeth. These are a fixed size for all students, and we will be using them for setting the case we have today. So the first step, we draw the midlines and accentuate them, and then we want you to emphasize the arch of the wax. So if we remove the upper, we take out the upper and look at the wax here. You can find that the wax has an arch that is like a U-shape. We would want to keep the setting of the teeth within this arch. So we can use a pen. We can use this pen and just to draw a line Make sure that the wax arch is clear for you. So we want to make sure that the midlines are clear. So we have a clear midline. It's better to draw it using an ink marker for you to see it because we want the teeth on the midline. And then we open and we begin drawing on the wax itself. So the wax corner we, uh, we just draw this line because we don't want the teeth out of this arch. And just to help you, on a glass slab, the one you will be using for the setting, we take out the upper base plate. We ask you please to put on your base plate, your wax on the base plate. And using the pen, draw around it an arch. So we want to make sure that we are always comparing with this arch around. We're going to do this side of the case of the wax, and you will be doing both sides in your clean, uh, laboratory training. Okay, so we have an arch now, and we're ready to set the teeth. The teeth we are using today are made of acrylic resin. It is similar to the heat cure acryl we use in dentures, but these are made in by the manufacturer. So they use acrylic that is produced under heavy uh, pressure and high temperatures. So they have more cross-linking than the denture material we will have later on on the denture base. So they come in sets. These sets have numbers according to the numbers, and they have different forms and different shapes. You will take those later on in a lecture called selection of teeth. But what we want to emphasize here, and it's very important for setting, that the teeth sets come in a morphology similar to what you have taken in the dental morphology course. And we are emphasizing here identification of the teeth in terms of left and right of the patient. Okay? So when you set teeth, make sure that you identify which is the mesial side of the tooth and which is the distal. So we're not to mix up teeth while setting, for example, putting the laterals instead of each other. We will not have the ideal morphology of the arch if we have switch between left and right. We must make sure that we are identifying mesial and distal surfaces of teeth when we are setting. Also, this applies to the canines. We have slopes of canines. The distal is more rounded and longer than the mesial slope. So we need to identify them. This also applies to the molar teeth. 
in the molars, we still have more confusion sometimes when we are looking at the premolars because they look very much alike. For the molars, we have uh, uh, distinct uh, clues and morphology for the six and seven in the upper and the lower. We can easily identify them simply, for example, that the upper is four cusps and the lower can have the fifth cusp here. And the, the cross section, this is, uh, uh, it has a bit an oblique uh, occlusal morphology, while this has more like a rectangle. But in the premolars, we need to identify and see the teeth and look at the teeth carefully before we begin setting them to make sure that we identify the left from the right when we're doing them. The sets of teeth come with a midline and the teeth are divided equally and this is where the, uh, for, this is my right but the patient's left. This set of teeth begins and this is the line dividing this set of teeth. So make sure you identify the morphology and left from right before setting the teeth. So now we're going to begin with the setting. We are going to use a wax knife for this purpose. We're going to take out the base plate from the cast and we might do a window. What are we doing now? We are making space for the tooth that we're going to place. We're going to use a hot wax knife. We're going to do like a window. So if we look closely at this, Okay, we are freeing a box for the la first two to place. So this is an empty box. After removing this empty space, we are placing the central incisor in the soft wax that we have so made soft. We're going to make sure that we are on the same side. We place our central incisor and make sure that the incisal edge of this tooth okay the incisal edge of this tooth is with the what we call the our reference our reference is a glass slab or a plastic in our case so the tooth that we have placed is exactly on the same incisal edge of the wax rib So, we also make sure that the incisal edge of this tooth, in comparison with the arc that we had, which is this arch, it's also fitting. So, we were checking it that it's still inside the arch. Once we are finished with this, we simply begin melting wax around the tooth to fix it in place. Now, making sure that the tooth is in position. It's in the arch form. It's corresponding with the midline. It's on the midline. And the arch of the tooth is going with the arch rotation. We have an overjet. You can see the overjet with the lower. And we're going to fix it in place. So we use a hot instrument, melting wax around the tooth, and we begin freeing more space for the lateral. The position of each tooth in the arch is present in the sheet you have in front of you. And we're going to follow the same rules. So for the lateral, the lateral position is tilted with an arch. We put it not on the incisal edge of the central, we keep it higher by one millimeter. So it, now it's on the incisal table. We don't want it on the incisal table. We will raise it by one millimeter. So we're going to press it into place a bit more. So it will be raised by one millimeter 
from the glass slab. We make sure it's higher than the central. We also make sure that the neck is depressed in the wax. Its neck is depressed in the wax more than the central as well. And it's following the same arch. We are still on the same arch. And then we begin fixing the tooth into location. Once we finalize its position, we begin fixing it. If you want more wax, we can bring from an outside source. And molten wax is spread around the teeth. We put it back and make sure we're still on the same arch. We have the overjet clear from the lower as it was in the first time. And it's in correct location. And now we're going to go for the canine. Once more, opening another box. Now for the canine, it's a cornerstone in the arch morphology. So the canine position is on the turn between the incisal part or incisal section and posterior teeth, which is the posterior junction. Of it. So it's on the junction between two planes. And the morphology of the canine itself, it has two planes. It has a mesial plane and a distal plane. The mesial plane continues with the lateral, as you could see. But suddenly, from the midpoint of the tooth, it turns to a distal half, and the distal half is rotated to meet with the posterior arch. The position from the wax rim, it, the canine should be exactly on the occlusal plane that we had originally. So still the canine is still on the same occlusal plane. The mesial half of the canine is with the incisors. The distal half is rotated to the inside, so it will meet with posterior teeth. The long axis of the tooth is upright. It's, you have these features clearly written in the sheet in front of you. And then we fix the canine into position. So the overjet, if you look from the inside, the overjet continues around equal between the upper, all upper teeth with the wax rim. For setting anterior teeth, we have to uh, check that the lower wax rim is totally clean. We make sure that the relations we have seen on the uh, glass lab are also present in the wax. Because if the wax is not touching, if you had a problem with the wax touching, uh, you will have the rules not applying. So anything we have on the glass lab in terms of tooth contact and angulations, we should have them on wax. Now we're going to check the midline. So as we told you in the first video uh, that we were going to we are going to use cast to cast midlines as reference for your training to overcome any problems with the articulator or any problems in your uh, your clinical skills in determining or drawing the midlines on the uh, wax and second because the wax it will be molten so we will lose the midline on the wax so we make sure that our reference for the midline is the cast to cast relation now we're going to begin setting the teeth. Adding, for adding the teeth, we're going to follow the same rule as we did in the upper, where we are opening boxes. Each, for each tooth, we're going to open a box. We're going to open around the midline, mesial to the midline. And as we said in the upper, 
where we told you that please set two central incisors together to make sure that we observe the midline or preserve the midline. We're going to open the box for one central, add it, and then add the other central on the other side. For the setting of the lower, make sure that you don't mix teeth together because they look very similar. So the midline on the uh, set of teeth that you have is the midline where teeth are set to the right or to the left to it. So make sure you do not mix teeth up because lower central incisors and lateral incisors are very close in morphology. So make sure that you take the correct tooth out and it is the second, the first one uh, to the midline, to, uh, right to the midline. And we're going to place it into location. And here we're going to observe all rules of setting. That includes the inclination of the root and the position of the incisor edge. So after opening the box, we make sure we do not remove too much wax. We melt down the area beneath the tooth and then we place the tooth in its position. We're going to place the tooth one to two millimeters above the occlusal table on the wax rim. The reason for this, we're going to do what we call an overbite. So what is an overbite? It's having the lower teeth bite in a higher position than the incisal edges of the upper teeth. So they are biting from the inside surface. Now, if we place the tooth in the wax rim, exactly on the wax rim height, we will not get an overbite. We create overbite by having the tooth set into location a bit higher than the wax rim itself. When each tooth added, we make sure that we have its angulation correct from the beginning, not to do a lot of adjustments. It's better to have the angulation. The root of the lower is tilted to the inside and the incisal edges to the outside. So we just press on the root area. We make sure that the inclination of the tooth is correct. And now we can compare it with the upper teeth. Okay, what are we comparing here? We're comparing the position of the tooth to create what we call an overjet. So you can see clearly that the lower tooth is going upwards more than the incisor edge. It's coming into close contact with the upper, but not actually touching. There should be a space. There is an overjet, there is an overbite, but there is a very minor space in between the two teeth. The lower should not be touching the upper. We'll try to focus on it and show you the overbite. Okay, so now we could go on and set the other two. We also shouldn't compare the midlines together. So we go back to our reference. Our reference was cast to cast midlines. So we need to make sure that the midlines of the lower and the upper are correct in the setting. Now we go to the second lateral incisor. If you want to be sure about the midlines, as we told you in the upper, you can place two central incisors together to make sure that the uh, central incisors are uh, on the midline. So here we are opening for the other central incisor, fixing the tooth in place by melting the wax around it. When the wax is molten around the tooth, it will become soft and it will be more adherent. So it fixes the tooth into place. Now we're taking the other central incisor because we want to observe and preserve the midline. So we put it according to the same rules of setting, which is one millimeter above the occlusal plane. The roots are depressed. And then once into location, we use molten wax and we begin filling in the spaces between the teeth, fixing it into location. And while it's still warm, we compare it with the upper. 
So if we need any adjustment, we can simply just adjust it in the warm wax we have. So we compare it with the upper, over jet and over bite. This tooth, we cannot compare it because we have the wax in. But if the tooth was there, we should have an overbite with the upper tooth. Okay. What we need to concentrate on is the midline. So what we are looking at, that the midline between the both incisors is corresponding with the midline of cast to cast area. Okay. This is how we adjust teeth in location. We simply just move them while they are in the side the works. To make sure that the midlines are coinciding, we use a ruler in between connecting the upper midline with the lower midline. And we, as you can see, that the midlines are coinciding with each other. The upper central and the lower central are coinciding. Now we're looking more close at the overjet and overbite. So the overjet means that the incisal edge of the lower is more back, more back than the upper incisal edge. And the overbite means that the lower incisal edge is higher than the upper incisal edge and it goes to the inside. But this does not mean they touch. We have an overjet and overbite with an empty space in between these two teeth. So we have an overjet and an overbite without any touch. We will explain this in the uh, lecture talking about setting rules for anterior teeth. Now we're going to add the second incisor, lateral incisor. So once more we open a box, a bit short than the length of the tooth. And while working, we need to you to make sure that the tooth is stable in position. Then we melt the wax beneath. We're melting the wax beneath the tooth. We're taking out the correct tooth. So after we have removed the other central incisor, we just made the central incisor to ensure the midlines. Now we're adding the lateral incisor. Now the lateral incisor has, when you set it, you need to set it distally inclined. The root is distally inclined. The root itself is uh, depressed into the wax, the incisal edge is more prominent to make the labial inclination, to produce the labial inclination of the tooth. The tooth should become in contact with the other, uh, with the central to, uh, incisor, and the overbite and the overjet are still applicable. And notice that when you look closely, that the overjet should be parallel between both teeth. Okay. So the overjet that we have created should be parallel between upper and lower teeth. This is how we move teeth in, in their location. We can adjust the position of the tooth, adjust the position of the root. And make sure that all inclinations are correct correct and recheck them on the upper. We also fix the tooth from the lingual side making sure that we have enough molten wax going around the tooth and around the uh, interdental papilla area to fix it in place. Notice that for the lateral this overbite had closed the space left by the lateral upper lateral incisor. Remember when we put the upper lateral incisor, we, w we made it one millimeter away from the occlusal table, half to one millimeter away. So we, when we did the overbite using the lower lateral incisor, we have closed the space. Now we're going to add in, after finalizing the position, we're going to add in the canine. One of the rules for setting lower anterior teeth is that we should have the incisal edges all straight, central, lateral, and distal of the canine straight with one piece. Taking that the, inc the incisal edges are straight, the roots are not. The roots have different positions. They have different angulations. 
slight distal angulation for the lower central, more distal angulation for the lateral, and more and more distal angulation for the canine. How do I determine how much do I angulate it? It easily can be determined by the incisal position itself. If I want this incisal position straight, I could not get it if this tooth is tilted to the side. Okay, so if I'm going to put it here like this, and going to observe the incisal edge, I would not get a straight incisal edge, the incisal edge straight, unless the tooth is angulated in this direction. You can see that the distal angulation of the tooth here is more. If I'm going to put the lateral into location, and I want the incisal edge straight with the central, I will not get it straight if I adjust it or put it in this angulation. The teeth are designed that if you put them in the correct angulation, they will automatically have an incisal edge straight. Okay, so our guide, different tooth molds have different morphologies, but the idea is that when I have the incisal edges straight, I will have the roots in the correct angulation. So this will determine the angulation of the tooth having the roots divergent in, the, in, in a degree that is enough. When I place the canine with them, the canine is distally angulated, but how much do I angulate it? It's determined by the distal surface of the canine. I angulate it in a way, if I'm going to angulate it like this, for example. Okay, this has changed, shifted the angulation, so I'm going to readjust the lateral to be straight. Central should be straight. And the canine, I'm going to adjust it in the angulation where I have the distal surface of the canine going with the line that we had. So this will not apply unless I put the canine in this angulation. So this is straight, this is now straight. And with the distal surface of the canine. So they are all on one line incisally. Okay? Okay, so now we're going to add in the canine. So we're going to apply the same rule we talked about, having the incisal edges together. These two teeth that we added are now together. But now we're going to add the canine in. So we open a window for it. And it's important here to have the teeth fixed into location because lower teeth are thin and they can easily move in wax. So sometimes you are aiming to add one tooth, but you end up moving the other teeth after you have already added. So we're trying to melt the canine position, make sure that we have enough window for the canine to be added with a distal inclination. So we're concentrating first on putting the canine edge with the incisor edges and in the correct distal inclination. And then we slightly rotate it to the inside because we want it also to follow the arch here. Okay, so if I place it like this side, but after I make sure that the incisor edges are together, I rotate it to the inwards to make sure that it's within the arch that we're working with. And which arch would we follow? We're going to follow the upper arch. So I'm going to, after adding and correcting the position of the canine, I'm going to finalize its position, comparing it with the upper. So I melt from the buccal side and from the lingual side. I make sure that the tooth is first secure. And in the same time, this melting will soften, soften the wax beneath it, so I could move the tooth easily into location and correct its angulations. So I'm putting the tooth into location. And then comparing it with the upper. I should have the same overjet that I had. So if my overjet, if the tooth is touching the upper members, I, I should not have it. Now the lower canine should have the same overjet that the centrals had, the same overbite that the centrals have. And also it should come into location between the lateral and the upper canine position. So the width of the lower teeth are less than the upper teeth. The upper teeth are more wide. 
So the position of the canine correctly, to be correct, it should be in between the space mesial to the upper canine and distal to the lateral incisor. And this is the setting of the lower anterior teeth.